Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science. And today I want to help bust a few myths about silicones in skincare and hair care. First of all, let's start by talking about what it is not. It is not this type of silicon. It is not the type of silicon you cook with. And it's not this type of silicon either. It's this type of silicon. And I will go through the different classes of silicons and those that make up those classes at the end of this video. But first, I want to bust a few of those myths with the real scientific research to prove every statement I make. Before I get started, I just want to make sure you know that this video is not sponsored in any way by any suppliers or products or brands out there. We are a training institution at the Institute of Personal Care Science and we want to make sure that the proper scientific fact gets out there so you can make an informed decision about which ingredients you want to use in your product formulations. Now remember, you can contact us, info at personalcarescience.com.au for copies of any of the information I provide in this video. So now, let's get busting those myths. Myth one, silicones are pore clogging or comedogenic. I want to start by saying they most certainly are not. And there was a fantastic lot of research done on this back in 1989. Now in this particular study, they rated different materials by the amount of follicular keratosis or comedogenicity or pore clogging, as well as rating any potential irritancy of ingredients. As you'll see many of your plant oils, plant oil derivatives, plant oil esters, and even a whack of emulsifiers came back as both comedogenic and potentially irritant. Take a look at the score for silicones. They are neither comedogenic nor irritant for the skin. So by avoiding silicones, thinking that they're gonna clog your pores and then using more natural oils, you're actually introducing more comedogenic ingredients into your formula. A lot of consumers also incorrectly think that ingredients at the top of the ingredient panel are most likely to be pore clogging, or if they have an irritation or acne type reaction to a product, they'll generally blame the ingredients at the top of the list. That's not correct either. I also hear in various forums that when you combine a silicon with other materials, it then becomes comedogenic. That's not scientifically correct either. You'll actually find it's the other ingredients in the formula, and this research lists several of those are probably causing the comedogenic effects in your formula. It most certainly is not the silicons. I also hear that silicons form significant films on the skin and that they inhibit skin renewal. Again, they're not doing this. They certainly do not behave like PVP, acrylates, or other film formers we use to boost water or wear resistance, like in sunscreen formulas, for example. They create a breathable film, and we know this because of the results they had in that comedogenic study. Lastly, if you put plant oils on your skin, they will form an emollient layer. Your dimethicones, when you apply them to the skin, will similarly form an emollient layer. This means they hold moisture within the skin, but as you can see from those test results, it's a breathable emollient film that does not cause acne or exacerbate the skin or cause irritation. So just because you see silicones listed at the start of your ingredient deck does not mean they are the ones giving you a reaction to whatever product you're not happy with. The next most popular myth that I hear is that silicones coat the hair. I've heard this from so many hairdressers or consumers over the years and it's simply not true. It came from back in the 80s when the two-in-one craze hit the shelves. And what they found was that when you combine a surfactant foaming agent with some hair conditioning agents, if you didn't combine them in a certain way, the product would simply wash out of the hair and the hair wouldn't feel conditioned at all. So what they started to do was combine silicones with a quaternary agent like polyquaternions or guar-hydroxypropyl trimonium chloride with glycol diesterate, that's the stuff that makes your product look pearly. And by doing this combination, it was able to stay on the hair enough even after wash off. Now, if you use a little bit of this combination, it will make the hair feel beautifully silky and conditioned in a two-in-one product. 
But what happened was your consumers said they wanted more conditioning benefits from a two-in-one product. Now let's face it, if you're going to put a foaming cleansing agent with any sort of conditioning agent, it's going to wash a fair bit of it off the hair. So what they did is they wanted to add more of these coating agents or coating blend into the formula to leave more of the residue after wash off. Eventually, it went a little bit too far and ended up coating the hair. But it wasn't the silicones doing it on their own. It was actually the combination of the dimethicone with the quaternary agent with the glycol disteriorate that formed that coating. Unfortunately, silicones got the blame. I will let you know that if it had been a plant oil plus a quaternary agent plus a glycol disteriorate, you would have had the same problem. But natural oils just weren't used in hair care like they are today, so instead dimethicone got used and unfortunately got the blame. Now when I use dimethicone in a conditioning product, it is chemically similar to me using a plant oil which means a lot of your conditioners have plant oils in them serving the same purpose as if I wanted to put a dimethicone in there. Now if I want to remove a dimethicone or I want to remove a plant oil, I just have to use shampoo. It really is as simple as that. And if you're not convinced, wash your hair a second time. It's gone after that second wash for sure. The next most popular myth I hear is that silicones are bad for the environment. This is not true either. They are totally degradable. Please note there is a difference between biodegradable and degradable. And I have an entire video on this concept. Just as a little recap, when your dimethicone washes off your skin down the drain and into the waterways, it will float to the surface and then land in the soil. Once it's in the soil, it will break down to its monomers, which are its single units, and then it will undergo microbial degradation and reduce back to its starting form. If they're volatile silicons, they will evaporate into the air and degrade in the presence of sunlight to silica, water, and carbon dioxide. This means when you use a silicon material, it is eventually going back to its starting source. So it is totally sustainable. I also want to point out that silicons come from quartz or sand, which is the third most abundant mineral on the earth. And the amount of silicons that we use in personal care is quite insignificant compared to the amount of water we use in personal care and the amount of water we use every day. So if you're concerned about the environment, be careful about your water use. It's massive compared to the amount of silicons that we use in personal care. I also want to point out that this degradability pathway happens within days. So your silicons are not microbeads or plastics. Plastics stick around in the environment far longer than your silicons ever will. And again, they go back to their starting materials and they're the third most abundant material on earth. So we really don't have a problem where we're gonna run out of them anytime soon. Finally, I also hear other things like they'll make your skin dull or dehydrated or block other ingredients. Again, it's simply not true. As we've established, and from the comedogenic study, they are a breathable emollient when they're put onto the skin. So they definitely do not block other ingredients, especially do not block other ingredients any more than your plant oils might. They definitely cannot make your skin look dull or dehydrated and cannot get in the way of the skin renewal process. The skin renewal process starts at the very basal layers of the epidermis and they certainly aren't getting there. Next, they're not clogging at the surface of the skin. And finally, they can't make your skin dull or dehydrated because they're emollients, just like your plant oils. So they are going to provide a beautiful emollient film on that skin that is totally breathable, unlike some of those plant oils. Now, I want to introduce you to the family of silicon so you can get to know them better. First of all, we have our Amodimethicone class of silicons. These guys have a positive charge and are used a lot in your hair conditioners. They feel beautifully light and silky and they definitely do not coat the hair. They will help with detangling and conditioning. And as you can see, being liquid are great in spray on products. The next is your cyclomethicone family. Now these are fantastic because they're what we call volatile silicones. It means that when I apply them to the skin or the hair, they will evaporate over time. This means I can have fantastic emollient delivery to my skin 
and the product feels beautifully smooth and soft, but it will evaporate over time, so there's nothing left after a certain period of time. Your volatile silicones are what get used in your hair oil so that you have a beautifully weightless finish. This one here is your dimethicone. Now dimethicone comes in all sorts of molecular weights, from very small molecular weight for a really light, almost weightless finish, through to your heavier molecular weights for a more cushiony, velvety finish in your products. In formulas, he is providing the lasting emolliency to the product, but has a beautiful, silky skin feel. And remember, he's the one that's been tested in those comedogenic studies in particular, and proven to be non-comedogenic and non-irritating. Then you've got your silicon polyethers. You'll see these on the label with PEG or PPG written before the dimethicone or other silicon related name. Now these act as your emulsifiers and they're great in water and silicon or silicon in water emulsions. They come in a variety of different forms to hold different types of emulsions together. They're used for stabilizing and they have a beautifully light skin feel. Finally, we have our silicon cross polymers. And these also have a beautiful skin feel, very light finish, and they help increase the viscosity of your other silicon-based formulations. So there you go, now you've met the silicon family. And I hope you feel better by seeing that scientific research to debust those many common myths. Just remember, they are not pore clogging or comedogenic. They do not coat the hair. They do not hurt the environment, and they do not make your skin dull, dehydrated, or block delivery of other ingredients, and they are most certainly not plastics or microbeads. In fact, silicones are vegan-friendly, palm-free, sustainable, degradable, hypoallergenic, and non-comedogenic. Please remember we are an educational institution, so please contact us for full copies of this research. Remember, we are not backing any product or any brand. I'm just sick of the misinformation that is out there. I hope you found this video informative and I hope you contact us if you're still unsure of anything I've said. Please give the video a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.